Hey everyone, we're getting ready to go on an epic 1500 mile round trip, road trip, up to Dead Horse, Alaska. We hope it's a round trip. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this is going to be epic. It's uh, considered one of the loneliest roads in America and also one of the most remote and one of the most dangerous. We're going to go check out the hype and see if that's true or not. Keep your fingers crossed that the weather holds out for us and stay tuned for us sleeping in the back of our truck for the very first time. Yeah, that's a challenge we're definitely going to have to face. We're not taking the RV with us. That road is a little too gnarly for it. And we'll have to deal with uh, truckers and wild animals and mosquitoes. Rhonda's favorite. Hi, I'm Rhonda. I'm Angie. And we are Adventures in Nomadness with our puppies, Blitz and Lucy. So today we found ourselves with an extra day we weren't planning for in Fairbanks. So we want to share with you how our day's gone and we're going to share some tips too on how to have a great time in a city with dogs when it's hot out and you cannot leave them behind. So we're delaying our Dalton Highway trip for, for a day because of really nasty weather up there. Two to six inches of rain and potential flooding on the small creeks. Tomorrow's supposed to be a lot better and that flood warning expires tomorrow as well. So we're in Fairbanks. We're uh, bright and early this morning. We're going to tie in some dog stuff today and what to do with dogs when you're traveling and you don't have a spot for them. It's going to be in the 80s today. So as the day progresses, we will not be able to leave the dogs behind in the truck. Our first stop at 8 o'clock in the morning. We can leave the dogs in here because it's not hot yet. And we're going to go into the Morris Thompson Cultural Visitor Center. And uh, this is a spot I've wanted to come. And then I'm getting some coffee. <laughs> she needs it bad. <laughs> well, who is Morris Thompson and why are we here? Morris Thompson was a very prominent native leader up here in Alaska. He um, worked for the uh, Bureau of Indian Affairs and he was also the CEO or head of Doyon, which is a very large native corporation here in Alaska. Uh, sadly, on his retirement trip, he was 60 years old, uh, he retired from Doyon and his wife and one of his daughters went to Puerto Vallarta and sadly they died along with my stepmom in the Alaska Airlines plane uh, January 31st, 2000. So they have named this cultural and visitor center after him and uh, it's so rare that I'm actually up here in Fairbanks. I really wanted to check it out. I've heard awesome things about it.
So the Morris Thompson Cultural and Visitor Center was a great window into Morris Thompson's life and also into native life in Alaska. It's totally free and we both enjoyed it. It also has quite a bit of history associated to Fairbanks. Hey, puppies! So tip number one, go as early as possible when attractions are open to beat the heat with the dogs. Poor Rhonda, I'm dragging her to another museum. This time, Museum of the North. <laughs> It's well worth it, I promise. I promised her coffee and then I said, no, wait, we have to go to this museum because it's still cool enough outside and a little overcast. So we've got more time to do another inside thing and leave the dogs in the truck. It's really about the dogs. It really is. <laughs> It'll be about her and coffee here really soon. <laughs> This is the ultimate outhouse experience. <laughs> this is actually uh, something you can be part of. It, it invites you in, but this is the outhouse experience at the Museum of the North up here in Fairbanks. Pretty funny, it's giving me some cool ideas for our own outhouse. But uh, yeah, this is the end all be all of outhouse art and fun times in the outhouse. There's too much to look at. And it's not a real outhouse, obviously. No hole. No hole. This is fun. This is a real woolly mammoth skull and tusk. How cool is that? It's huge. Well, the Museum of the North is located on the University of Alaska Fairbanks campus. It'll cost you $16, but there are discounts if you're an Alaska resident, if you're a senior, or if you're military, or veteran and it's a really great museum and it's a brand new museum uh, not totally brand new but it's a newer building than when I was here last and I know you enjoyed it so it's kind of part paleontology mm -hmm. uh, cultural anthropology sociology and art it's, gallery yeah, <laughs> one art music uh, history it's got a little of all of that it does so definitely check it out if you're in Fairbanks all right time to get uh, somebody here some coffee need coffee <laughs> <laughs> hey, I wanted to mention too, this really cool building. They decided to do something really unique with it and not just go with a box building because they wanted to also highlight uh, the architectural aspect of uh, them being a really cool museum. Are you happy? I'm very happy. Although I've only had one sip of this, it's still, it's quite good. We uh, obviously didn't go to, you know, your chain. We went to a local uh, coffee maker and it's quite good. So tip number two with the dogs is find a place you can sit outside with them. We usually have good luck with coffee shops because they usually have some sort of outdoor seating and breweries. But sadly, uh, two breweries that we looked at yesterday uh, didn't allow dogs even in their outside seating areas. Wah, wah, wah. Anyway, here's a couple of good tips for trying to find places you can go with your dog. We use an app called Bring Fido. It's a good place to start, but it's, it's definitely lacking. It doesn't really include all the businesses where you can bring your dog. But if you go to Google and Google in dog-friendly restaurants near me, then that might come up with a whole list. And we're gonna try and find a place later on where we can have a dog out on an outdoor patio and maybe eat for dinner. All right, well, it's too hot in the day now to have the dogs in the truck, so now we're trying to figure out some sort of touristy things around town we can do. One of them is uh, Pioneer Park over there, so there's stuff we can walk around. Uh, I think there's some recreation of Gold Rush towns and stuff like that. And uh, in the parking lot over there, you can see some RV parking, and you can actually spend the night. So some fifth wheels with their trucks detached, so I think you can spend a night or two here if you want to, you know, do that here. And then uh, so let's go walk around. We've got some water for the dogs. We're well prepped for them. And they're kind of excited to get out and go for a walk. 
and he's already having fun. Hey, we just first walked into Pioneer Park and it's kind of part museum, but this is super cool. This is called the Harding car or the Denali car. This is the train car that President Harding rode in 1923 when he came up to Alaska. By the way, he was the first president to visit Alaska and he came up to go to strike the, the golden spike for the completion of the Alaska Railroad, which completed the 500 miles that was being built at the time. Kind of a side antidote if you're from Talkeetna and you've heard of uh, President Harding. He ate at the Fairview Inn in Talkeetna and then uh, died a few days later. So it was kind of uh, anecdotal that he may have died of food poisoning after eating at the Fairview Inn. But it's probably not really true, but it's kind of one of those uh, old wives tales, I think. All right, well, this is where we have to part ways because I'm gonna go on the train car, but of course the dogs can't go. We're going to take turns. Hey, that stern wheeler behind us is called the Nanana and it was considered the, called the last lady of the river. It was constructed in Nanana, uh, just south of Fairbanks, and it was a, had a wood-fired steamer uh, on board. So it basically burned about a cord of wood an hour and it could store 230 cords of wood. It's a lot of wood to store. Well, that was Justin back there with Buddy and House Grouse. House Grouse is a rough grouse that he rescued. It was hit by a car. And a House Grouse is uh, four, that's the name, is four and a half years old now. So uh, probably would have been euthanized, but he rescued it and is doing well here at Pioneer Park with Buddy the Great Dane. And Justin has a little shop there with some amazing antler carvings. All right, so Pioneer Park is free to walk around and it's a little bit part museum, part uh, amusement park, part uh, just a really great picnicking area. And as part of the museum part, they've got a lot of these old cabins that were some original cabins in Fairbanks and then moved here to Pioneer Park. Okay, our tip number three is to find a cool location to take your dogs. Honestly, it, this was not as uh, touristy or as crowded as I thought. So this was a pleasant surprise and the dogs got tons of interaction. They got tons of pets from kids and adults and everybody's like, oh, they're so cute. They got lots of social time. And so this is a, Definitely a cool stop for us and for them. So yeah, find a cool spot, whether it be a park, someplace like this that's unique to the destination area you're at, and a hiking trail, I mean, anything like that. These guys love that kind of interaction. So we spent a couple nights in a hotel, a motel, and this is what you get for $200 a night in Fairbanks. Yeah. Hey, it's clean, the people here are awesome. <laughs> so other than just being old, but they've actually put a lot of money into it and this is a fresh paint job. Uh, every place else in town is in the middle of summer in Fairbanks was about three to four hundred dollars a night. So uh, we and had this a, place is booked solid. Yeah, they were booked solid. So we were lucky to get a room. <laughs> With a waiting list on top of it. Um, we had a hard time finding a, a place to sit outside with the dogs for dinner and so we ended up just doing a, a Uber Eats and ordering in which is kind of a nice treat for us because we don't get to do that very often and uh, finding a pet friendly room and uh, my next tip is go on to hotels.com or booking.com and it's just really easy to filter by dog friendly places and that's how we found this place at a reduced price over all the other places. <laughs> ah, we're off to the next adventure. Time to hit the Dalton Highway. Yeah, the it Arctic looks Ocean. Looks like the weather is much better than it would have been had we left yesterday. Yeah. So keeping our fingers crossed. Hope you'll follow along.